we're going to be talking about masking in Lightroom. But first, I need a photograph. Greetings all. Um, today's little adventure was actually meant to be something completely and totally different, but it's, um, it hasn't deterred me because the weather's changed, or should I say the weather was not what it said it was going to be, because it was supposed to be pretty clear with rain coming in in about an hour or two's time. So I thought, Do you know what? I'm going to chance it. I'm going to come out and uh, it, 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 it's, it's not what it said it was going to be. Uh, but it's, it's starting to break a bit now. The only thing is it's raining and you know, I don't do rain. It's not heavy, but I'm gonna chance it anyway. <sighs> One of the things I normally tend to do is quite a lot of B-rollers and walking about and talking about stuff, but I'm not gonna do that because I've really got to concentrate on where I'm walking because it is so muddy and slippy. I don't fancy falling over the edge of that. And I also don't fancy falling on my arse. What is masking and why would we use it? Well, the thing is, so you take a photograph. I'm going to discuss a bit more about this when I actually get home. But when you take a photograph, any adjustments that you make in Lightroom, it's going to adjust the whole image. But there's going to be times when you want to just alter parts. So we're going to go over just a very few basics. So let's get these photos and let's get home. This is the image we're going to demonstrate on masks. Um, first thing we want to do, because it's annoying me, is get rid of that bird. Right, so the image we've got here, we are going to want to alter just the sky. And the reason being is because it's a little bit overexposed, but if we drop down the exposure, the whole image is changing, which we don't want. So the first thing we're going to do is select the mask and Lightroom will select certain areas of the mask for you. In this example, the sky. So we're gonna get Lightroom to select the sky. Now, one of the reasons why I don't rely purely on Lightroom selecting uh, just the sky is if you look down this section here in this bottom corner, you'll realise that it's also selected part of the sea. But for the purpose of the video, we are just going to overlook that for now. So the masked area is in red. So any alterations that we make are going to alter just that particular area. As you can see, the rest of it is not changing. It is literally just the mask. Let's go strange, as you can see, that's the area that we've changed. And that is literally all there is to a mask is you select the area that you want to alter or edit, whatever it is that you want to call it. And it's literally that simple. But just a little bit of a side note of the reasons why I prefer to select the masks myself and not rely on Lightroom is, let's just uh, close on that. If you can see here, that looks pretty okay, doesn't it? But when you zoom back out again, and this is the image that people are gonna see, is you will see a ghosting as where Lightroom hasn't made a really good selection. So just for the sake of it, what we would do here is we'd select the mask and we're gonna add add, because we're gonna add to this mask. We would select the brush and we'd actually brush over that area just to get rid of that ghosting. That is something that I would do. Or I'll just use the brush tool to start with. On to the second one, same again, I've got a bird that's annoying me, so we're going to get rid of him. So on this image here would be, I would, I would actually create a different sort of a mask. And the reason that I would do it this differently 
is, could have same reason explained before, is that we don't want a ghosting if Lightroom would create the mask for us. Because once it got down to this point, the mask would just stop. There's no gradient in it, there's no feathering. So it's very, very harsh when it stops. And on here, you would probably get a really horrible ghosting. And I've seen quite a few images where this has happened. The editing has been, it's been pretty good and really enhanced the image and really made it look good. But then you've got this ghosting across the coastline or uh, on, on, like on the horizon and it, 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 it spoils it. So just a little bit of something to be careful of when you're doing your masking. In a scenario like this, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't let Lightroom do the sky. Um, on this one, I'd actually use a linear gradient. And the reason being is because your start point and your end point, it would gradually fade the mask away. Anything above would be uh, it'd be a dark red, and then anything below, it wouldn't touch. So let's just say we start about here, and I'd end probably around about there. But the beauty of it is we can move the mask as we sort of you know, progress through, just in case you got it a bit wrong. And the thing with the linear gradient as well is that you know you can change quite a bit of it, so we could move it to be more of a gradient, less of a gradient, really, really handy. And you can change the angle. But for this scenario, I would probably do something like that, so it's gradually fading. So any alterations that you'd make now would be harsh at the top, less at the bottom. And you don't get the ghosting. Let's just um, quickly do the this one just very quickly, and we're going to move on to another part, which I would say is it's it's like a mask, but it's not, and it's the color mixer. Let's just have a look at the grass down here. So what we're going to do is select the color mixer. We're going to select the color the, the grass. And it will bring up the color which it is which is obviously green if we click on this visual page here anything that's gray is not going to be altered anything that's green will be altered so this is very similar to a mask any alterations we make to the hue the saturation or the luminance is going to change that as you see green a bit more brown and if you can see on this section here, it's moving it from left to right. You can just drag it about if you wanted to. The saturation would be light, light black and white, but not, it's, it's just a le lot less color. And that is a lot more of the color. And the luminance, which is gonna be slightly brighter and slightly darker, which is on this side. So again, you can just drag it up and down if you wanted to. So let's just make it a little bit more green, less green. Let's just have it a little bit more green just for the purpose of showing. And we want it green, green, green. And a little bit on the brighter side or a darker side. Oh, well, it was a bright morning, wasn't it? So we'll have it about there. Just for the purpose of the video, <laughs> this is not how I would actually edit, but it's just to show you um, like I say, it's like a mask, but it's not. It's more colour related. I suppose you call it colour mask. And, and that would be pr pretty much all masking is. It's selecting parts of the image that you want to edit. And then you do your edit and it's not affecting anything else within the image. And the beauty with masks as well is just say that you didn't like a certain mask. Well, just delete it. So I'll quickly come jump to this one here and I'm just going to explain what masks are used and the reasons why. Okay, now it's pretty similar to the, the very first one we did and it's set a little bit further back. Um, ignore that, my phone's just finished charging. Okay, so how many masks do you think I probably used on that? Well, it was four. 
I got the one for the sky. I got the one for the grass. This one and this one are instead of using a vignette. Now, on or in Lightroom, you do have the vignette at the bottom. But I tend to find this really harsh and it doesn't enhance the actual image itself from the, the section that I want people to look at, which is the central part because it's these clouds. So basically what we did with this was I created two masks. One with a radial gradient, which is going to be the central part. And this one is the same again, but inverted. So it's not going to alter this part, it's going to alter the back part. So the first one was just increase the exposure just by 0.36. And that one was to decrease the exposure by 0.43. You try to keep them around about the same. It's just increasing and one decrease and another. Without those, we can just turn those off. And you've still got a pretty nice image. but I do think that does help make it pop and that's just using a mask. So there we go, like I said, it really was just basics of masking. Just to show that, um, you, you know, try not to alter the whole image and try to do sections, which is like, you know, your foreground and your background or there's a rock at the front just um, as your foreground image and then you've got the subject which can be the back, you know, try to, try to do any post work that you do in as, as masks and separately and you you notice such a difference in your final image when you do these edits small edits i've seen quite a few photos of people who've ramped up saturation and all sort of business and it it spoils the image trust me small adjustments are all you're going to need and by the time you finish you may end up with, I mean, on this one, it's just four masks. Most of the work that I do, I've probably got 10, <laughs> 15. It varies. It depends on what part I want to, to, to tweak slightly. But that comes with time. But to start with, two or three masks, which would be, in say, in this scenario, which is the sky and then obviously the, you know, the, the, the land or a cliff or something, you, you, you're just going to separate those and do them separately. Uh, and I hope you found this useful because, you know, it's one of those things where um, I was a bit sceptical of using masks because they, it just seems to be that word that people seem to be frightened of using a mask just to create the final image. And the thing is, is once you do one or two and just play around with it because you're not going to spoil nothing in Lightroom or whatever the editing software that you use that can, you know, is capable of use, doing masks. Because if you make a mistake, just delete the mask or reset the image back to its original and start again. So I hope you found that useful. Like, subscribe and um, turn on that bell notification as well and you're going to see more of me. Until the next time, thanks for joining me and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, stay safe. I'll see you soon.